It's uh, Sunday, June 11th. And we're under a heat advisory. And it made me smile because these gentlemen up here cleaning the windows on a construction site, no less. I like to think they have a decent breeze, but they also got their umbrellas. So if you're out and about, stay cool. A quick note about luxury housing. You see this, the Martin here? I think units here are like 5,000 bucks a month. It's not even open yet, but you're gonna pay a lot of money to live in these luxury looking apartments. Now look, look at that. See that balcony? That's going to be like a, I mean, don't quote me, but that's a, like a two level arrangement there. That's fancy pants stuff right in the heart of downtown and they're going to pay a lot of money. And that is what it is. Sometimes people complain about building places like this. Oh, why are you only building luxury housing? Well, here's how it works in my mind. It costs a lot of money to build stuff. And who's got money? Rich people. So you build a place like this and people who got the Martin kind of money are gonna come live down here and that's great for them. What about the rest of us? Well, there is a 12 and a half or 15% set aside for low income units up in here. That's handled by uh, the cities. It's done by a lottery. Some of these units, uh, about one in eight, are actually gonna be um, affordable rents for the people who live in there, not just rich people. They got to be low income. But the real thing is, there are people around here who have the money to stay at the Martin. If you've got the Martin, they come down here and they stay at the Martin. If you don't have the Martin, what they do is they rent someplace else. They rent more down market apartments in other areas of the facility, they're competing with you. You build them a fancy luxury apartment with some affordable set aside, and then these folks go rent the fancy stuff. And then when you're trying to rent more modest accommodations, well, you got a little less competition and the prices are gonna end up a bit lower. We've actually seen, not consistently, but here and there, rents come down in Sunnyvale as new housing comes online. A lot of the housing is indeed luxury housing, but it does push down the rents in the rest of the city. It's really just a question of supply and demand. If you can build this fancy stuff, if we can afford to build it and we can get rich people to pay for it, that's great. Then we have more units. And then the units that remain, there's less pressure on them because there's less demand and the prices go down. So, I don't remember how many units are in here. But this is a lot of, of rental housing that the rest of us in Sunnyvale don't have to compete on paying the rent for. Because the people with money who can jack up the rents, they're going to be down here. And that's how it goes. This place is kind of neat because you got Prius, Honda Insight, that's actually a hybrid car. Prius, 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 couple cars, not a Prius, and I think I missed a couple. So you got Prius and Prius. And we got, can't really see it from here. Donald Trump 2024. So everybody's got a freak flag that they like to fly in Northern California. That's how it is. Down here at Wilson and Olive, across from Ellis School, Looks like they're just finishing up construction. That's cool. What I notice here is 
We got these new curb extensions. These are kind of neat because pretend there's no curb extension. You got to cross from here, 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 all the way, all the way, all the way, all the way over there. But with the curb extension, you just have to cross from here over to there. You spend a lot less time in the intersection. What I think is interesting is I'm used to San Miguel. It's San Miguel since February. We're starting to finish them up. They've been building concrete curb extensions. It takes a long time. This stuff here may well have been done inside of a day and at much lower cost. This is an example of quick build infrastructure. It's not quite as rugged. The nice thing is you can put it in quickly at very low cost and you can see how well it works. And if you need to adjust, you can adjust. And then at some point that you want a durable concrete solution, well, you can build your durable concrete solution right here. I'm excited to see this in the city of Sunnyvale. And I hope to see more. Here, let's try out this crosswalk. I'm going to count from here to there. And then I'm going to count the number of seconds it takes me to walk just across the yellow part. So if I'm here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine seconds for a tall, long-legged guy like me to cross the street. Longer for kids, of course, they tend to run. Let's start from here, though. One, two, three, four, five. It takes half as much time to cross the street. And the benefit on a busier street like this is if you want to wait for pedestrians who take 10 seconds or 15 seconds to cross the street, or do you want to wait for pedestrians who take five seconds or eight seconds to cross the street? The pedestrians spend less time in danger and the cars get to spend less time waiting on pedestrians. The other advantage is with these curbs, instead of whipping around here, whoosh, like that, cars gotta come up here, slow way down. When you slow way down, you get a better chance to see who's in the crosswalk. And then you can come down the street at a reasonable speed. So it's a win-win all over, except maybe for hot rodders. All right, this is old San Francisco Road by the Pamp. And uh, this curb extension, got the bike lane right here, and a curb extension, that's kind of nice. Personally, my only beef with this is if you're on the bike, you gotta squeeze up close to the traffic to get through here. What I would do is you move the curb extension over a little bit and let the bikes ride through on this side. That shortens the distance that people in the crosswalk have to walk. Instead of going all the way from here to all the way to there, they go from where you see the bicycle line. It's a little bit shorter. It's also a little less conflict for the pedestrians and the bicyclists because you deal with the cars over here, then you've got an island here, and then you deal with bicycles over here. So you can kind of do this on a bicycle if you want to ride in the gutter. But I'm telling you, you don't want to ride in the gutter. Now, this is just a little bit further down. You might say the reason that you want to have the bicycles over here is because there's going to be parked cars over on the gutter side. Again, I'd rather just put the parked cars over here and then have the bicycles to the right of the parked cars. That way, people getting out of the car there, they're not going to door a bicycle. There's fewer people getting out on the right, so the bicycles are safer. The other thing here is, over here, if you're driving past and there's a car parked right here, you're going to slow down. 
they have that vision area, the daylighting zone up there. So you would stop, stop parking. So you approach the intersection, you can still see the pedestrians in the crosswalk. The only real challenge with that kind of design is you've got to make it so that uh, motors are used to parking right up along the curb. And you put some paint in, they're going to say, well, I, I should be parking along the curb, right? They're going to park in the bike lane and you get conflict. So you've got to either put in a curb or some structure.